Here's another ILD case. So as we scroll through from top to bottom, it doesn't look like there's much going on in the upper aspect of the lungs. But as we get into the mid lung zones, we start to see this ground glass opacity with some mild superimposed reticulation and some associated bronchiexis, which given that it's in association with this ground glass opacity and reticulation, we would feel pretty comfortable calling traction bronchiexis. So as I mentioned before, the zonal distribution looks like it's sparing the upper aspect of the lungs. To me, this looks pretty convincing for basal predominance. We could reformat the coronal plane to show that indeed it is basal predominant. In the axial plane, it should be pretty striking. There is subpleural sparing. So if we mag up on here, the most subpleural portion of lungs demonstrate relative sparing. And I think that's actually pretty convincing, this degree of subpleural sparing. In a lot of cases, this subpleural sparing is much more subtle. And I'll show you an example of that in just one second. If you look here, it actually looks like the fibrosis and the lung disease in general just is more bronchovascular predominant. So in the axial plane, it looks to be bronchovascular predominant. If we look at the coronal plane again, I think the subpleural sparing really comes out. If we look along the hemidiaphragm on the right and hemidiaphragm on the left, it looks almost like someone with a black marker or gray marker drew a line across the interface of where the hemidiaphragm is and where the interstitial lung disease is. So this is pretty convincing for subpleural sparing. Look at here and look at there. So this is what you would probably put in a textbook and I'm sure you guys have seen examples of this in textbooks. And so if we look at the soft tissue or the axial plane again, you'll see that the esophagus is also mildly dilated. There's a little internal gas fluid level in there. And so this is a great look for nonspecific interstitial pneumonitis in the setting of systemic sclerosis. So here's another case of NSIP. So these are HRCT images, skipping every 10 millimeters. And so we see basal predominant ground glass opacity and reticulation with some mild traction bronchiexis as well. You note that here there's actually a mix of pure ground glass opacity and then areas of ground glass opacity mixed with reticulation. So it's the areas of pure ground glass opacity that draws you away from a diagnosis of usual interstitial pneumonitis and more toward a diagnosis of a non-IPF diagnosis. If all the ground glass opacity were superimposed on reticulation, you have to assume that the ground glass opacity you're seeing really just represents microscopic fibrosis that you can't resolve on CT. And that is a pattern that would not dissuade you from a diagnosis of UIP or probable UIP if there are no other findings that suggest an alternative diagnosis. But here there is enough, in my mind, pure ground glass opacity, which dissuades us from just labeling this as a probable UIP pattern. There's plenty of ground glass opacity without areas of superimposed reticulation. Another thing here, which is much more difficult than the last case to discern, is that there looks to be some relative subpleural sparing. You're going to say, where is that subpleural sparing? So you got to hallucinate a little bit. But there's these little areas that don't look like they're as se severely involved within the posterior aspect of the lungs. And so we could pull up the prone images here, take a better look at those posterior aspect of the lungs. So we look carefully, and there's relative subpleural sparing. Again, kind of hard to see here, but that's this is real life. So we do know that in essentially all cases of UIP, the, the UIP, usual interstitial pneumonia, that emanates from a diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, the fibrosis will start at the most peripheral portion of the lung and start to march inward. So if you see a case like this where there's even relative subpleural sparing like this, you know that it's not UIP, certainly not UIP in the setting of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And then so you start thinking, thinking about other things. And so this is a good look, a real life case of nonspecific interstitial pneumonitis. Oftentimes the 
subpleural sparing if it's there. So again, you can get case of NSIP, nonspecific interstitial pneumonitis, where you don't have subpleural sparing. But if you do have subpleural sparing, sometimes it looks like this, where you really have to squint to see areas of subpleural sparing. It can be quite difficult. And so in these situations, uh, I often will ask my colleagues to give me their opinion, tell me what they think as well. But um, unfortunately, these cases aren't all textbook, and you kind of have to use a little bit of imagination uh, and a little bit of, of understanding of how these cases evolve to figure out what the diagnosis is ultimately.